I know there's so many people out there that prefer the sleek, small footprint of an ITX build, but the problem is that everything ITX usually costs way more than everything else. But don't worry, in today's video, I'm gonna solve that problem with a repeatable budget AF ITX build guide. Let's have a look. PulseWeight is a remote monitoring and managing solution that allows you to completely control devices around your network to do things like run and schedule Windows and third-party updates, apply security patches, run custom scripts, auto-remediate IT issues, and my personal favorite, simply being able to remote desktop into any machine so you can control them from anywhere in the world. The monitoring side of things is incredibly useful and now beautiful as well since their latest updates. You can easily see the status of every virtual machine, server, or even your network devices in a nice looking map diagram. Diagram. This platform will suit advanced sysadmin users as well as complete IT beginners as it's super easy to set up and navigate with tons of documentation and training videos on how to do everything. Pulseway is hooking you guys up with a free trial and 20% off if you click that first link down in the description and start your free trial today. Thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Alright, so jumping straight into the parts list, let's start with the case because with ITX builds, it honestly affects a ton of your other choices and shout out to Cooler Master for hooking me up with this purple NR200P. This thing is an absolute beauty and the reason why I like it so much is because you can essentially use it for budget ITX builds like this but it's also definitely high quality enough to use in more expensive builds too. Comment down below with a basketball emoji if you remember my personal ITX build video like a year ago. Inside this white version of the NR200P I'm actually packing an Intel i9-10850K that's water cooled and a beefy RTX 3070 so this case can definitely handle whatever you throw at it. Cable management is also pretty straightforward as there's cable ties all around the PSU holder which helps out a ton and with the P model you can choose either the tempered glass side panel like I did or a more airflow oriented side panel if you don't care about seeing inside your build at all. Links to this case and of course everything that we're about to talk about today are linked down in the description. And just as a quick note, the ZTT website February 1st launch is almost upon us and I'm going to be selling a ton of my gaming PC builds over there including this one today. So make sure your wallets are ready if you're thinking about scooping up a baller gaming PC. So next up we have our CPU and I'll definitely admit that this is going to be the most challenging part to get right now if you're thinking about following this as a build guide. This here is the Ryzen 3 3200G and I personally was able to snipe this off Mercari for $82 but that was an absolute steal. As we all know by now the 3200G has built in Vega graphics and it's a perfect temporary solution for someone that's waiting to snipe a graphics card during this GPU shortage. If you need help with doing that by the way I have a perfect 2022 GPU buyer's guide video linked in the upper right hand corner. The 3200G is perfect because it can allow us to game right now without a GPU which we'll show the numbers for in just a minute but then I'm also going to show you how I recommend upgrading to a GPU and we'll show the numbers for that as well. Now in order for those numbers to be fast you're going to have to have some fast RAM as well and remember my new recommendation for these APU builds is to have no less than 3600 megahertz and that's exactly what we got in today's build guide. This is the Neo Force FA 2x8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 3600 megahertz and even after Black Friday here going into 2022 this RAM kit continues to go on sale and you can easily find this for less than $50 or even the $45 which is what I personally paid for it. All of these components are plugged into the motherboard obviously and this is is definitely a tough pill to swallow, but the cheapest AM4 or B450 motherboard that's ITX form factor is this ASRock Gaming ITX AC model, and this usually goes for $100 brand new. Now, I would personally suggest trying to snipe a used deal here because that's a lot of money for a budget motherboard, but like I said in the intro, ITX parts are usually more expensive, and that definitely applies to motherboards. Moving along here, we get to our SSD, and this is yet again the Clevcraft C710. These 512 gigabyte NVMe drives have been super clutch for me over the past couple of months, as they're always super cheap cheap around the low 40s and so far they've been reliable and we haven't had any issues with them at all. Powering all these components we have the EVGA Supernova 550 GM SFX and I actually purchased this refurbished on the EVGA B-Stock website for just $45 and this was yet another steal. I have seen some budget ITX power supplies go on sale quite often over the past few weeks but I think for $45 this is going to be pretty tough to beat right now in terms of price to performance especially considering that it's a tier B 80 plus gold certified unit. And finally before getting into the benchmarks we do have an aesthetic choice here. Sadly, I wasn't able to fit some cable extensions in there because obviously that would just be a nightmare in the already crammed NR200P, but I was able to throw in some up here RGB fans just to give it something a little extra. If you're going to put in RGB fans, I would highly recommend a style of fans like these where there's only one cable going to a hub. Using those fans that have both a PWM and an RGB connector would be a nightmare in a build like this, and you always have to keep cable management and airflow in mind when designing tiny builds like this. So here's what the final parts this is looking like for our roughly 450 
$450 to $500 budget AF ITX gaming PC. And as you can see, this is the parts list without having a dedicated GPU. In terms of value, this is actually pretty solid considering what it is. Remember, you are going to get the same price to performance with an ITX build because of that ITX tax. Now, I do want to show you some GPU options that you can upgrade to in the future. I personally went with this MSI GTX 1050 Ti ITX version, and I actually really like it. But you could go with anything from like a 1060, maybe a GTX 970, or maybe even the recently released RX 6500 XT, which you can check out in this video up here. You definitely have a ton of options with the 3200G and this 550 watt power supply. And I actually really like the MSI ITX version of the 1050 Ti that I chose today, specifically because it doesn't require any external power cables, which is perfect for the already crammed NR200P, like I said earlier. And for today's benchmarking section, we're gonna show you the performance that you'll get both with and without this GPU. And speaking of which, let's jump right into that with our first title here, obviously Fortnite. And for these benchmarks, I'm gonna show you the gameplay and results with the 3200G by itself and not the 1050 Ti installed, but I'll also mention for every game what you can expect with the 1050 Ti if you are thinking about upgrading this budget ITX gaming PC. So with the 3200G in 1080p in performance mode, we got a solid 106 average FPS. And once you upgrade to the 1050 Ti, you can get that up to 1080p and low settings and expect around 130 FPS. Next up with CSGO, we'll start with these easier to run eSport titles here. And in 1080p and pro settings for both the 3200G and the 1050 Ti versions, we got 106 FPS and 139 FPS respectively, both certainly very playable. After that was Valorant, and just like CSGO, I kept the settings for both our configs at 1080p and low, and with the APU, we got 92 FPS, and with the dedicated GPU, we got 146 FPS. Rainbow Six Siege followed up after that, and when using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and low settings, again for both setups, we got a very playable 74 FPS with the 3200G and 154 FPS with the 1050Ti. Grand Theft Auto V was up next, and for the 3200G, we put the settings at 1080p and normal and got just under that 60 mark at 57 FPS, and for the 1050Ti, we could crank that up to 1080p and high settings and got an obnoxiously nice 69 average FPS. Now getting into our AAA tougher to run titles though, we have Halo Infinite and the 3200G was unfortunately only able to squeeze out 46 FPS with 1080p low and 70% resolution scale. But once you upgrade that GPU, we could crank the resolution scale back up to 100% and we got a solid average of 67 FPS. Next up was Forza Horizon 5 and the 3200G could only handle 41 FPS in 1080p with very low settings, still playable mind you though. And with the 1050 Ti in 1080p low, we got 65. And for the last gaming benchmark of the day, we have the new Call of Duty Vanguard. And this one was honestly a little sad to see. In 1080p very low, we had to crank the resolution scale all the way down to 66%, but we did get 49 FPS, which actually wasn't too terrible. And over with the GPU in 1080p very low, we got 53 FPS. As far as Time Spy goes, to paint an overall picture of the performance with both setups, we got a score of 1,108 with the 3200G. And with the GPU upgrade, we got 2,459. The ITX pricing is certainly going to give us a hit in price to performance, but if you're interested in seeing what you can do with the same price point without the ITX tax, then I would highly recommend checking out the video that's on the screen now. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.